wonderful, wonderful. Well, welcome everybody. Good, good evening. We are so delighted that you joined us today. AISK has conducted a series of webinars since the start of the pandemic. And we, this is one of maybe, is this our sixth? I believe it could be our sixth one. And we have really been doing these to uh, sensitize the public about what AISK is doing. We are a very a, a progressive school is what I would call it that keeps on the cutting edge of things. And so we want to be able to share that with, or with, the, with the public, both locally and internationally, and also to, for prospective parents, people who might be considering AISK as an option. And so we're excited to be here. We've hosted um, since the, right from the start of the pandemic. And we've, had, we've, we've also shared lots of information with other schools as well about uh, how we do what we do. And we've gotten tremendous feedback. So I'd like to welcome you. Thank you for joining us. We're in for a wonderful discussion this evening. And I have a delightful panel who will share with you and I'll introduce them to you in just a moment. I'm Renee Rattray. I am a proud member of the AISK family. I serve on the board of trustees and I also have two children. I'm mom to Zari and Luca and they attend AISK. They're going into grade four, which I can scarcely believe. They've been there since EYP. And um, I am, I'm, happy, happy as can be. So I want to share that joy with you. So thank you for joining us. Um, with me this, this evening are a couple of parents. Some of them are new. Um, one of them is not new at all. <laughs> and I will tell you more about him in just, in just a little while. And then we have a teacher in the middle school. And this uh, this evening, we're going to be sharing with you specifically about our middle school, what the offerings are. And you know, our middle school is from grades six to eight. And we offer a real diverse and wonderful program that we're sure many of you will be interested in hearing, in hearing more about. So uh, AISK really has been the gold standard. You know, we've gone through a pandemic that has been just overwhelming on every front and schools in particular education in particular has had to pivot has had to you know just really adapt quickly and i'm proud that aisk has been able to do that i believe that we really have managed to quickly jump into gear and operationalize many things um, we've been face to face for 30 of the 36 weeks of this last school year and um, that's a, a, a really, that's a lot to, to be grateful for um, because we believe the philosophy of AISK hinges on connect, connectedness. And so it really is important that we've been able to offer that to our parents and to our students to have students be face-to-face. -face. And I mean, really we have to say kudos to the team at AISK for being able to do that. And also to parents who in the community and children in the community who have managed to you know, adhere to protocols. And you know, the children are the most resilient. They're the ones who, who, who just fall, fall in line and know exactly what to do and remind parents about what is required. So I want to say um, congratulations to the team at AISK for the fantastic job that has been done so far. So this afternoon, this evening, we're going to share with you a little bit from the team about what, what we offer at AISK in our middle school. We're going to speak to a few parents who have joined the AISK family. And also, as I said, to one of our teachers, Daniela Zan, who is here and who's going to be telling you about what you can expect if you choose to come and join our family at AISK. Um, so let me introduce those here. Um, Rajan Trehan, he's parent to daughter uh, Mihar, and she's going into grade eight. As uh, she he hi, joined us, hi, <laughs> hi, hi, Rajan. Rajan joined us only in January, right smack in the middle. So he will tell you his his experience and why it's what led him to to move to AISK when there's there's so many changes happen, happening. It was a really bold step. And then Farana, she's a parent to daughter Sanjana, who is going into grade nine. 
And you joined us in August, right, Verana, of last, of 2020. So, so a full school year, a, a completely strange school year, but we're happy that you, you've been there. So welcome. And then Mark, Mark Haddad, I was telling you about this parent who has been at AISK in Jamaica, we say since Wapi, Wapi Kill Philip, which is a long time ago, he's had four children attend AISK. One of them is still there, Kyle, Christian, Emma, and Aliyah is still there. And in grade 11, am I right, Mark? Yes, you are right. Awesome. So a whole 18 years of AI of coming through those gates. And uh, we're joined also by Anna Wallace, who is the deputy head of school, director of admissions. Anna has also been at AISK for a long time. There's tremendous institutional knowledge that resides in her. And um, so we'll hear from her as well about some of the uh, protocols that herself and the rest of the admin team put together to ensure that AISK could continue operating and operating as effectively and efficiently as it, as it has done. Danielle Azan is a middle school teacher and she is also a parent um, of Asha who is entering grade one. Right, Danielle? Yes. Time is flying. All right, so we're gonna, move right, we're gonna move right in. We don't have a lot of time. So why has AISK done well? What, mm. has, what, what have we done? well during this period is the question that I, I, I'm asking. And I think um, I, I will share a few of them. I think that, as I said before, there's a strong crisis management team, which meets regularly um, three times per week for regular updates. I think that parents who are considering AISK as an option would not need to worry that there's constant review and monitoring of the systems and the protocols that are in place and throwing out what doesn't work and reassessing and, and putting things in place that do work. And a community that really has acted with integrity and, and takes responsibility for their part in making sure that we stay face to face. Um, and then the DLP, our distance learning program has been extremely successful. We managed to pivot like the next day, the day after, I think, well, after COVID hit. So COVID hit and I think the teachers went into, had a planning session the very next day. And then following that school opened for, for students online. And we've not gone back since, apart from that one lock, the, the, the lockdown, the last lockdown we had where everybody stayed home, but still, we managed to get our early years and grade 12 students back and um, under the guidelines of the DRNA. The, the, yeah, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, we've really managed to keep our focus on keeping kids learning. And um, I want you guys, I don't know who wants to, maybe Mark, you've been there. And so you experienced DLP from a parent's perspective. You want to just tell us really, not DLP, I mean, just the whole, going back, you know, from that day when COVID hit and what, you know, how you were able to transition and how you observed AISK transition is something that you would start off by sharing with us, please. Sure, uh, thanks Renee. Evening everyone. Um, I guess I wasn't surprised to see that the school could pivot that quickly um, from the introduction in, I can't remember what year it was, 08 or, or maybe before or after, with the laptop program becoming um, a school that was really going to be um, a school focusing on IT with e-learning. Um, so it had transitioned so much with technology and my kids had become so tech savvy and the school was using so much tech to communicate that it wasn't surprising to me that basically the next day when they said, okay, classes are locked down, everybody's at home. You know, my kids were, at the time there were three of them there, you know, everybody had to get up get to the dining table and they were online. Um, I don't really recall there being much, much hitches um, in that online experience. It was that it was just pretty much ready and classes were running and, you know, I was working from home. Everybody had to be quiet. Um, and, you know, tech wise, um, you know, our internet egg thankfully was fast enough to handle it. Um, and it was seamless. Yeah. They, they were really doing classes pretty much the next day. Um, so I, I wasn't surprised, to be honest with you, that they were able to pull it off. Yeah, I think that I, I recall 
everything just being so structured and you know we're getting emails the very next day to tell us how how it would all work uh and so maybe uh who can I ask Rajan you could share with us what was happening because you did not begin the school year um at AISK so let us know some of the anxieties that you were feeling and your 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 daughter was feeling leading up to you transitioning to AISK in another school Thanks, uh, Vinay. Uh, good evening, everybody. <clears throat> so, uh, Meher, my daughter, I mean, she passed out from Hillel. Um, it was the first cohort, um, you know, attempting PEP. Uh, so, obviously, uh, you know, she was very excited, got uh, her, uh, you know, school of choice and moved to Campion. Um, but then, uh, you know, second term in Campion, uh, 2020, uh, pandemic hit and uh, <clears throat> basically everything kind of uh, went uh, downhill. Uh, there was basically a lot of, um, you know, transition to remote learning was very slow and uh, interrupted. Uh, there was continued uh, technological challenges as well. Uh, students' uh, engagement was uh, rapidly uh, deteriorating. And uh, there was, of course, uh, minimal effort by teachers and school administration to improve the level of engagement. And um, it was actually at that point that we really thought that, uh, you know, it was wise to kind of uh, make that move. So we did give uh, Mehar a couple of choices um, to visit the schools. Um, she, <clears throat> uh, uh, she visited the AISK and was privy to attending uh, brief sessions uh, for some classes. Uh, amongst them, one of the interesting ones was um, strategies for success. Uh, in which the class on that day was discussing uh, the read on, um, uh, you know, capital building um, in the U.S. Uh, because it had happened the day before, and it was very interesting how quickly uh, it became a topic for uh, discussions. And uh, Meher was, you know, very impressed that, you know, I mean, this is the kind of learning that is, uh, uh, you know, being promoted in the schools uh, that, you know, uh, students are being given an opportunity to. Uh, kind of, you know, have their own views uh, as to, you know, uh, positives and negatives of, of this incident and, and was really impressed by that. Um, and not just that, I think, I mean, she did a couple of classes, full classes remotely as well, that was, uh, you know, organized by the school before we actually took a final decision. Um, I believe, I mean, from the first visit, I mean, she had made up her mind. We were still kind of, uh, asking her to consider the options that we had uh, given her, but uh, she was, uh, you know, very adamant that no, I mean, this is, this is the school for her. So, <clears throat> uh, and, and I think, I mean, it has really worked out very well. I mean, she's done, uh, you know, two, um, uh, one, one full semester with the school uh, and then she's done very well, uh, whether it was partially uh, remotely because uh, there was, uh, closed down of school for, you know, uh, a period of time when PM actually mandate, mandated that, you know, even the private schools uh, would be closed. Uh, but, but I think, I mean, the transition, whether it was from face-to-face -to, -face, uh, to remote and then back to face-to-face, -to -face, it was uh, just uh, amazing and seamless. Uh, and, and that's that's what our experience is. Wonderful. Thank you for sharing that. Piranha, do you want to share with us? What led you to choose AISK last August? Sure, I would love to. So um, I had a similar situation as Rajan, and uh, Sajana was in a, in at Campion, and um, she was doing well, and that was her choice, and she really wanted to get in. And uh, what we found was that because of the Corona pandemic, the online learning experience was not very good and each child is different and learns differently and we as parents knew that for Sanjana that was not the perfect learning environment. Being working parents, both of us, um, not being able to fully be present with her while her learning was happening um, was a big drawback for us. So um, Sanjana has um, always um, heard of AISK. We also had visited AISK in the past. It was one of our primary choices for her. 
And uh, during this time, we thought it was a perfect and the most obvious choice for us to make this transition. So she actually made the decision and asked us because um, of what she was hearing from some friends and what I was hearing from some parents. And uh, so we just made the choice and it has been really, really amazing. So like the biggest thing that Sanjana tells me about her experience at AISK is that she is not afraid to ask any questions in class. She feels very happy and comfortable in going to the teachers and asking questions and does not feel that she, is, she has to worry about not being, uh, not, you know, not getting an answer back or some feedback from them. And this to me as a parent has been a major difference in her approach to learning. So that has been a big, big difference. And we see how it has really opened up her personality. She's not very shy with her teacher. She's very comfortable with them. And we're really happy about that. So thank you. Yeah. I'm sorry, I interrupted you, Mariana. Go ahead. No, uh, I think that's that that's about it. So the main reason was we really thought that she would be able to learn better. Like, so for example, in a traditional system, we used to ask her questions because we always want her to know why this is the answer for a certain sort of thing. We don't really want the answer, we, but we want to know why do you think this is the answer? How did you get to this? And that is where learning happens. And when we used to ask her questions, although she had excellent grades, we did not feel that she was learning it the right way. And um, having learned more about the way teaching is happening at ASK, we felt that that's a better way for her. And we have seen um, a lot of improvement and a lot of development of interest in her in a lot of the subjects that she's exposed to. Wonderful. Thank you for sharing that. Anna, I'm going to ask you to jump in here because I'm sure you must be bursting with pride um, as you listen to these comments about, about AISK and, what, and, and the impact it's having on people. So share with us here about what underpins some of that. You know, what's the AISK philosophy, the AISK way that causes parents to have this experience and students to have this experience? Uh, a, a true commitment to, 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 to every learner is really a big thing um, that we pay attention to. Um, and each, uh, every teacher we have on our campus, we ensure that they are teachers who want to be teachers and enjoy and have been answered the calling to education and therefore come to it with a passion that is undeniable, um, which is really important to us. Uh, the jury for specifically for COVID and um, we ha we spent a lot of time even before COVID made it to the shores of Jamaica prepping and uh, positioning as best we could in in a space of unknown uh, to to be ready for what we figured was coming and listening to schools in other parts of the world uh, uh, and hearing what they were doing it being in the the, the actually in the pandemic. Um, so that best prepared, and that's pretty, pretty much how we, how we do everything, how we operate or how we try to operate around everything to be ahead of the curve in the, in, 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 in the conversation, ahead of the curve in terms of being prepared for what is to come and very strategic about what we do uh, with all things, um, whether it's from our standardized, go ahead standardized testing and all of that. Yeah, I think Mark right. raised the whole issue of the, the one, the one laptop one program. program. Yes. That, the one -to -one program. And that, that was something that was done years ago. I mean, it's almost as if we were being prophetic and, and, and um, anticipating a time such as this. Um, I think it was really, we were future-proofing um, AISK, I think, and the education product that, that is offered. Absolutely. Absolutely. And even with that, there was a learning curve, right? There was still a learning curve um, uh, to, to, that, that we needed to climb to be, to be able to be best ready. And I think that is something that is most important to mention um, as we continue. 
uh, in the time of COVID. It's not gone. It's not going anywhere right right now. And we have to live in that awareness, but we also have to be ready to continue to sh do the work, uh, to be uh, best prepared to continue the learning uh, at AISK and on our island and for the children of our world, right? Uh, it's so important. Um, and so we, we are certain that um, we, we are dedicated to that and we have prepared and positioned ourselves for opening for September as well with um, a lot of the same protocol that we already had, uh, but let's call it version 2.0, knowing what we are, assuming what we know is coming down the, down the pike. Um, and we're looking forward to having our students on campus come mid-August again for a full sum school year. Yeah, yeah. Um, Daniel, maybe tell us here what you, how, how you had to transition as a teacher. Um, and, and create this new space for students with, in, with continued engagement while observing all the protocols that were, and, and you know, these new expectations and anxieties that parents and other teachers had. Share with us a bit about that. Sure, good evening, everybody. Um, I think as teachers, we're used to change. <laughs> so there is no one standard, right? Every day is a new day. We're, we're taking what's coming at us. And especially when you're dealing with middle school students, <laughs> they bring their own quirks and um, we have a lot of fun. So I think actually, like Mark was saying, like Anna was saying, we've had our one-to-one -one program for quite a while. So all of our teachers and students are very knowledgeable about how to use our programs, how to use our systems. And and so I would say the transition, while challenging, because of course it's something new, um, it's something we had to plan for, wasn't necessarily difficult in a lot of ways, because like you said, we found out about the pandemic, we're seeing it coming, all the teachers and admin are having conversations about, okay, what are we going to do? So I think our admin is to be commended, you know, we're very good at planning. <laughs> so that was really great. So we had a good base going into the idea of what would happen, at least as far as we could know. And then, you know, we had that day and really the transition, I think, was quite smooth because we use technology so often anyways. We have our learning management system. We use Schoology. The kids are used to using it. Um, we had done trial runs with them and running our conferencing system from before. So I think the planning was a big part of it. And then also, I think the expertise of our teachers. I mean, we have really amazing teachers. I love my colleagues. So they're all really great at finding engaging ways. I, as teachers, we're also learners. So we're constantly learning with them and we have to keep ahead of them too because they're really quick. <laughs> you know, they, they really are fast, especially with tech. So we have to keep on top of that as well. And I think all of that together made the transition uh, pretty good. I think we had very, very few issues, if any, mostly maybe with connection issues with students, but I think we were able to get our program up and running really fast, which was nice. I think that's what I was going to ask you next. Like, how, how did you find ways to build and create community? Because I think that's it's the connection that we've missed most about not being, yeah. you know, for the moments when we weren't face to face, or even when students were allowed to be on campus, they had to be distant and what have you. What did teachers have to do at AISK to ensure that students remained connected? I mean, well, teaching online is a, is a different way of teaching in a lot of ways. So it, it is as much about community as it is about the subject. So you kind of switch, you flip a little in how you approach. Uh, for example, one thing I did is I used to have lunch hours where the kids could come in as they liked. The entire middle school could come in. I would set up a Google Meet and they would come in and we'd have lunch together virtually. And we'd talk about right. things and they'd show me things they were doing, um, those types of things. Uh, we would play. Yeah. yeah, totally unstructured, just, you know, hanging out. It was, you know, if they wanted to come, great. If they didn't want to, no pressure. And just incorporating some of the gamification in our classes, using fun activities, the kids could, you know, play music as they come in, just finding ways to engage them, taking the time to really connect with them. Uh, our advisory program is really great for that. We had an advisory period where students would come in, we'd do a daily check-in, you know, like, how's it going today? How are you feeling? What's working? What's not working? 
And I think having those opportunities to connect with them outside of class in that way and be available really helped to keep a bit of that sense of community that I think we lost being, you know, face to face or not. Right, wonderful. I, I want you to tell me some more about the actual programs at, at um, in the middle school, but maybe, but Mark, could you could you share with me first? You've had four children, so you're a veteran in in this ASK middle school business. So, can you share with me a bit about what how what what value do you think that experience, though, especially in those six to eight grade six to eight years, added to your to, to your children? What do you see now? You know, when you look at them, how did they benefit? Um, well, I think. That um, I don't know if it was Piranha or, or Sir Trahan that said about the confidence of a child to ask, and that there was no dumb question, there was no silly question. Um, so I, I started to see kids that, uh, my kids that were very confident in all forms, inside of school and outside of school, um, to ask questions, to advocate, to advocate for self, to advocate for others. Um, I saw social awareness, um, you know, mixing it up to 50 odd different um, nations. Um, I, I saw an ability to navigate socially, um, not just academically, that, that especially tech-wise, I was so impressed with their ability to be doing things like, you know, PowerPoints and um, yeah. uh, using technology in a way and editing suites and things that I was like, yo, you guys could probably help me out with some of my presentations at work. Um, besides that, um, there, there was an ability to navigate life and a confidence and a poise that I started to appreciate and a use of the English language that um, I was like, you know what, maybe this nine to 10 to 11 or 12 kids, whatever it was, class size, um, you know, sometimes is one or two educators in a classroom. I was like, you know, wow, this, this is, is starting to show a value for me um, that caused me to be going into my 17th or 18th year now. Um, so that, that was some of the experiences in the middle school and they have transitioned and, and left the middle school. And what I did notice is that, um, you know, and Daniel, you said it, that the school is very proactive and they're always planning. I saw an improvement of the product. I saw an improvement in recruitment. Um, I saw a balance between um, locally based Jamaican educators um, and uh, overseas based educators coming in. Um, so I saw that, you know, the building of a team um, that was improving. Um, so I saw an improvement year on year to a relatively young school that I think, what, 30 years old? How old is the school now? 25, I don't know. My age, it all comes into like, you know, a year is like a month. But anyway. All the years um, rolling. Exactly, exactly. I remember the 25th anniversary. Um, but um, there, was an, there was a striving for an improvement of a product. Um, a product of education. Um, and it, mm -hmm. it certainly, um, as I, I've said before, um, operate like private sector, you know, um, not to commercialize it, but, um, you know, <laughs> it's certainly value for money in what they were doing. Um, right. And I'm not in the middle school anymore, um, but I've seen, you know, a couple of my, one of my, my daughter went away to, um, boarding school in Toronto. She spent two years away. Um, and she spent two years away because um, she had to, and it was more for health reasons than it really was educationally. Um, and her transition to a school like Havago, um, as seamless as it was um, in respect to, um, there was no issue that she had with handling either the course load, the diversity. Um, there was no issue with the academia. Was she able to maintain a similar grade? Um, and was she able to 
learn the style that Havago was, was delivering and Metro Prep previously was delivering? The answer was yes. Um, so I was very comfortable um, seeing what was offered here because um, I never wanted to send my kids away. Um, I think the kids must stay with you as long as you can. And come time for university, you let them go if they so desire. Um, so, yeah. you know, that's a, a long answer to a short question. Yeah, well, you've been there a long time, so you have lots to tell. Thank you for that, Mark. I do. You're welcome. Rajan, you, you know, I, I, the, some people may be watching this and thinking, how do you transition to AISK and its program from a school that's done, you know, the Jamaican curriculum all along and, and prepared a student for PEP? What does that transition look like? I'd love to hear from you about how, how your daughter was able to adjust to that. And, and, then, and then we'll come back to you, Daniel, so you can tell us a little bit more about the program itself. <clears throat> so, uh, Rini, I mean, I think um, for, for Meher, the transition was very easy. I mean, it was basically twofold. Uh, one, you know, uh, with the input of the teachers, um, you know, it, it basically uh, was made very easy. I mean, just to give you an example, uh, on the first day of her school, you know, even though she did not have a computer that was, you know, um, a prescribed, uh, you know, computer, uh, there was a loaner that was made available to her the same day. And basically she was, uh, you know, running with, uh, you know, the, the remote classes or, or in-school classes uh, very quickly. Uh, and and um, otherwise also, I think, I mean, it was just the way of teaching that was made so interesting uh, by, you know, the overall way of learning. I mean, just to give you an example, uh, in terms of the English, uh, you know, uh, there was uh, a book that was, uh, uh, you know, <clears throat> uh, given to them. And then there were a number of days within which, I mean, they were supposed to read it. But the way to come back and discuss as to, you know, what the author actually uh, meant where in what chapter and you know uh, just discussing it amongst uh, the students and of course I mean I, I hear that I mean there were projects uh, that were being given to the students and they would you know have their own discussions and then of course I mean teacher would have uh, her own input and then that kind of you know makes learning kind of you know resonate with them I mean they, they cannot forget that way of learning uh, rather than, you know, I mean, just giving them a comprehension passage and say, okay, you know, I mean, answer the question. So I think it was overall, yes, I mean, Meher was used to some of it, I mean, during her primary school, uh, but, and then, you know, of course, I mean, we instill some reading habits, but, uh, but otherwise, I think overall, it was the school environment, way of learning, way of teaching, that kind of made it so interesting for her that uh, transition was really, you know, very, very seamless. Right, right. Thank you for that. I remember in that in the last term, my children read a book uh, about a dog. I think it was Win Dixie. I think that was the name of the book. And they they not only read the book, but they watched the movie. Then they read the play and acted out acted the play out. And we had to, you know, and and then they filmed it. And it's just these these creative and various ways of having children, you know, grasp the learning is, is, is really powerful, I think. And the super, one of the superpowers of AISK. Um, Daniel, share with us. And Piranha, do you want to just add here if, if the, how that transition really quickly from high school without PEP <laughs> um, being a part of the AISK experience now? How did your daughter experience that? Was it smooth? And yeah, sure. It was uh, very smooth. The uh, learning experience was smooth. And just like uh, Rajan said, I totally agree that because it was interesting, um, it was self-motivating for her. So a big difference that I found as a parent was I did not have to keep reminding her to meet her deadlines or to meet or to do what was needed, she was on top of it. And both me and my husband, we usually don't try to, you know, um, be on top of things for them because we believe in teaching them independence from now and taking ownership of what she needs to do. 
So had I pushed her, had I had my husband sat with her, she probably would have done even better. But that's not the point of middle school. Uh, going into high school for us, they need to be more independent and take charge, take charge of their things. So we found that because everything was so interesting and her class group worked together as a team and they were very friendly, there was uh, no bullying, a very good atmosphere, conducive to learning. And so she was just very motivated and so it was easy to transition and she was able to talk of her assignments and stuff. Wonderful building self confidence and responsibility. That's the goal of, of middle school, I think. Daniel, you'd love to hear yes. that. So, tell yes, us I a do. Little bit more, more in, go into detail a little bit more about the program, the middle school program, testing, assessment, mm -hmm. all of that good stuff. Okay, um, it's a lot. <laughs> we do a lot. Um, I think it is a program and I think um, everybody has spoken to that. We really want students to take ownership of their learning. So we're not going to always be in front of the classroom telling them things. It's, it's very much they are partners in their learning. We are facilitators. We are helping them to figure out what their interests are, especially in middle school when they're going through so much with puberty and everything happening internally with them. You know, they're still really figuring out who they are. What's their identity? What do I believe about this? What is my opinion about this? And so we really try to teach those soft skills in, in all of our classes, and especially, I think, highlighted in our strategies of success class, which I'll talk about in a little bit. So we really push critical thinking skills, analysis. So we start, we look at our curriculum from what they'll be doing in 12th grade, and we come all the way back down to sixth grade and you know, even further. And we are looking at what are the skills that they need to learn. So we're really looking at mastery of skills. So yes, the curriculum is important. We want it to be challenging. We want it to be engaging. I'm very happy to hear, by the way, that everybody finds it engaging. Because I think sometimes they think they're having fun, but they're learning too. <laughs> you know, so that's happening. And we, we try to make the curriculum as engaging as possible. And also giving them choice, right? Because choice is a part of it. They want to take part of their learning. They want to do inquiry projects. They want to have Socratic seminars. They want to have debates. And so we do, I think, a pretty broad way of, of learning in that we do a variety of assessments, both formative and summative. Um, we do map testing, which is kind of our benchmark of where we are and where the kids are really achieving. And map testing, which is me measures of academic progress, is directly linked to our standards. So we are testing them yearly to see at the beginning of the year, okay, where are they coming in? So even if they're a new student, we have a baseline. And then the teachers look at these scores, all the teachers meet together, we have conversations, we know your child. I mean, that's the benefit of a small school and small classes. And we have those conversations about each child. Okay, what's working for this child? What's not working? What can we do? What can we help with? How can we support? And that those conversations are happening all the time, day by day, <laughs> in and out. And so it, it really is something we're very passionate about is making sure everybody is learning and in the way that's best for them, right? And so we're, we're constantly evaluating and looking at it. The program itself is integrated. So we're really looking at, like I said, what are those skills they're going to need and how do we scale that down? So sixth grade, they're learning skills on that level. Seventh grade, we're reviewing, we're going, we're building. Eighth grade, we're building. Ninth grade, we're building. So by the time they get into high school and the IB program, which we have, um, they're ready. You know, they're ready to take it on. But it's not to say that it only works for our school. So if they're coming in, as soon as they leave our school, they're using those skills elsewhere. They're going to college, they're using those skills. If they have to move, we're very sad to see them go, but they're taking those skills. So, you know, those are the things we are imparting in them. And that really is important in middle school because they're really building, even neurologically, those connections and those skills. So we have to make sure that we are building upon those skills so that they have the support they need and the practice in using those skills so that, you know, when they get to ninth grade, you don't have to be running after them to do their deadlines or to do their work. And then yeah, our I think this is 
bit of time for, for you to tell us about the strategies of success. Yes, oh, just going to that. So the strategies of success class, which is taught by Vanessa Taylor, is really, a, I would say it's a mix of health and IT and life skills and social skills and organizational skills and study skills, like it's, it's everything. But it's those soft skills that help to support what we're doing in the classroom. So they're looking at digital citizenship. They're looking at health. They're looking at how to be good human beings, good global citizens, which is really what we're building here, right? So the course itself is really built to grow them so that we have that well-rounded child. We have that well-rounded student who can succeed and thrive in wherever they are, in whatever subject, and giving them those skills to support them. So the the strategies of success course is really important. We're looking at that social emotional learning that is so key at that age, you know, learning how to interact with people, communication, collaboration, all of these things. So that course just ties in to our entire program. And so I think, I think we have a really well-rounded program that helps to build them not only as students, but as people. Yeah. People. Right. Wonderful. Um, Anna, I'd like you to share with us about the results. I mean, ultimately, we, you know, the schools are in the business of ensuring that students succeed and, and achievement is important to us as well um, in strict academic terms, as well as producing global citizens and great people who Daniel just described. So tell us about our IB results, how all of that preparation then translates into the kinds of results that we see at the end. Right, so, uh, it Assessment is very important to us and it's almost what I find in the admissions conversation with parents who are leaving a traditional school setting is that um, they can scarcely imagine school without PEP and without CSEC and without the standardized tests that, that they're used to. And so I understand that. And so as Daniel was saying, you know, we have that measures of academic progress assessment that we do twice yearly with our students as an external exam piece, which is how I like to put it is how we stay true to ourselves on many levels at AISK, how we measure where the students are, how we measure where we are as a school um, as well. Uh, the, that measures of, the measures of academic progress gives us that data um, that this year we were really intrigued at, you know, wanting to see that what that data was going to turn up being in the time of COVID because uh, we knew we were doing what we thought we needed to do and just doing our very best uh, with a lot of advocacy and a lot of support from all of our stakeholder groups, everybody turning up as best as possible in this difficult time. And what happened is that we found that there was very little learning loss um, year on year in the MAP scores. And so for us, that was a, a great turnout. That was a great data to be able to have, to report, and just um, good to know that we were able to continue the learning in a very positive way uh, in a very challenging school year. Um, that assessment also sets, set us up with the information, as Daniel said, um, to know where we do have to continue to focus and uh, with each student and or as a school in terms of academics. Uh, so we do the measures of academic progress from, our, from grade three to grade nine. Um, uh, as our benchmark assessment. And then post to that, we do uh, PSATs and we use the PSATs and the SATs as our, 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 our benchmark assessment, uh, which also gives a good measure, the PSATs of how kids are going to score in the SATs and in the IB even, um, the International Baccalaureate Diploma Program. This year, we also had a 100% pass rate, which was really great. In our, um, in our IB cohort. Um, the, it, it didn't come without a lot of commitments and a lot of work from uh, parents, I'm sure, uh, staff members and the students who squirmed. And um, in spite of squirming, they graduated success successfully and uh, did really, really well and should be very proud of their achievements. Um, AISK's average score was above the world average 
uh, score. The world average score is a 29. If you don't understand IB scoring, it means very little to you, but we were uh, a, 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 an approximate four or five points above the average uh, world score, which is, uh, is something to celebrate. It's absolutely something to celebrate. Um, and so we feel that uh, having done that in a COVID year, we can only expect better as we um, say more better as we move forward. Uh, so yes, these, 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 these are the, the metrics, the data that we pay attention to, and we constantly um, check and revise and figure out how to improve the program year on year in the likeness to which Mark spoke uh, to ensure that we're best preparing our students, not only to move on to tertiary education or move on to whatever their next level is in education, but really just to be uh, accomplished human beings in this life. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I'm, I'm sure there are parents who are watching, local parents like me, like Mark, like others who, who are saying this all sounds fantastic, but very impossible for me to, to even consider. Um, and I love the parents on this call, uh, Rajan, Paran, and, and Mark, to share a bit about what this investment uh, means and the sacrifices that you know, you, you've made and why um you've you've chosen to do this what are the benefits of of doing choosing aisk what would you say to that parent who is anxious and thinking heck no <laughs> who is gonna go i'm sorry i didn't ask so uh, parana you go first sure sure um uh like you said um i think um uh, the fee structure of AISK is um, probably more than any of the other schools here or comparable to some of the schools, but um, definitely high, especially where we are coming from. But like you rightly use the word investment and uh, I really feel blessed that we are able to afford and invest in our child's education in this way because we feel that it gives her the correct learning experience and the tools to move forward. So um, the best investment you can ever make for your child, according to me and my husband, is that their education. You could give them different gadgets, you could buy them different clothes, but what is going to remain with them, what is going to make them is the education and it's just a no-brainer and it has been a great choice with no regrets at all. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, Rajan? Yeah, Rene. Um, you know, we are a professional family and I'm an accountant by profession. So, um, <clears throat> you know, uh, I, I always believe in, you know, um, whatever you invest in, uh, you look out for returns one day. And I think education is uh, one of the ways to really, you know, invest where, you know, if you invest well, uh, then, you know, you will have the returns. Um, <clears throat> so I think, I mean, uh, that's one of the main reasons. I mean, being a professional family, we do value education. And um, that's, you know, one of the number one priority. And, uh, you know, if we have to, you know, shell out a little more, and if there is, uh, you know, the level of facility, the level of accountability is, is uh, so high, uh, that, that the relative benefit is, is much higher uh, than what you're putting in, uh, I think um, it's, it's a, you know, a great investment. And, and that's what, uh, you know, uh, basically made us make, make that decision. Right, and in some place, sometimes you, you could spend a particular amount in another place, but then end up having to spend so much more, right? Absolutely, um, I mean, you know, with, with, uh, I mean, if, if you really see, you know, what those extra classes charges are, and you just add up for the entire year, uh, you will realize that, uh, you know, uh, you'd rather, you know, keep them in an environment where there's no or very little external help that is uh, required and even that external help i mean you know uh, or or you know you reach out to the teachers and they are so willing uh, to kind of you know come out and help you 
uh, have those conversations. I mean, the, uh, the, the results uh, that you see and even the map uh, analysis that you see, I mean, it's so detailed. It basically shows you, you know, where there are uh, development needs or opportunities and you are able to discuss that with, with teachers. And, and probably, you know, have a have a course of action um, to, you know, uh, improve. Uh, so I think, I mean, those, those are the things that, you know, uh, you really uh, value. And, and uh, if you are able to get that uh, at, at one stop, uh, then it's, it's worth it. Right, right. Uh, um, I, Mark, please tell me how you did it with four. <laughs> I don't know how I did it but, either. Um, give me the question. I, 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 I lost you for a second. Just repeat the question to make sure I'm not missing oh, anything, sorry. although I did use what the question was. We were talking about the investment, making that decision to send children to AISK, and you did it four times. So please tell us. Tell us why. Um, it's a dangerous question to ask me because I'm very unfiltered. Right. Um, I, I always I, I said to somebody who just recently asked me about the school. I said, look, um, if I had a financial advisor and um, they looked at my overall revenue and they said, OK, so you're sending your kids to school where they probably say, pull them out. Send them somewhere else. Um, and I didn't. Uh, we didn't. Um, we decided that the sacrifice based on the fact that I never had to beg my kids to get dressed. There was a, a joy to get ready, hurry up, get in the car, right, jump out of the car without even a buy. Um, yeah, and um, that joy and development that we kept seeing um, you know, and every time we had to draw a check, um, which got, you know, harder and harder to do, um, we decided that, um, you know what, it, it's worth it what we're seeing. Um, so besides the academic benefit, um, which was without a doubt, we could see it because when we heard the school would go IB, the kids were like in middle school and one of them was in the lower school. Uh, we started seeing the curriculum change, purposefully change. Even though IB hadn't reached the school yet, they had changed the curriculum so that um, they would matriculate towards, naturally towards when the IB hit, it wouldn't be this huge shock. And I was like, you know, look at, look at the planning that's going on. Um, and, you know, it, um, you know, would I have done it differently now? Um, no. Definitely not. It's, it's where they want it to be. Um, to have my kids in one school, all in the same place for their entire school life um, has been something that um, I wouldn't change. Um, and there's a, a slogan at, at the front of the school um, that says AISK, a center of academic excellence. Mm -hmm. There was a perception by a lot of people, maybe even myself, that Oh, send them to AISK, man. I can't breathe through. Everything all right. Uh, well, no. okay, well, I'm here to tell you that that ain't the case. Right? Um, it's an IB school, and they take the education part very seriously. Um, mm -hmm. I see teachers that are held accountable, just like in the private sector, like I'm held accountable, or for my numbers, for the success of my team, it's the same way. Um, you know, there, there are no free rides there. And I think that's important as well. So it's been a stretch, but I wouldn't change it. Wonderful. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. I think that we have, we have really shared quite a bit about what people can, can expect from an AISK experience, but I'd love Anna for you to just tell us again in this COVID environment, what parents can anticipate? We've just had GSAT results, not GSAT, what am I talking about? PEP results come out. So persons who are thinking of other options for, stu for their children right now might be thinking AISK could be one. 
um, but they're also hesitant because of you know what would what they they're not sure what they would expect if we're face to face you know all all day long. Can you share with them what systems are in place, what protocols are in place? Again, what a typical day at AISK looks like um, during this COVID phase. Yes, my pleasure. I'll say a few more things about the investment, and um, yes, uh, please. We've certainly, we yes. cer certainly. Anna, Anna gets all these questions all the time as head no. of admission. So yes, been here long enough to 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 again look at 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 where our students are matriculating to university, and um, the 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 return on the investment that parents uh, do make to send their children to AISK, and uh, certainly continue to show value and prove value. Uh, the, for, for, for our middle school years, we our school fees are about 20,000 US dollars for the year, for the entire school year. And uh, we have a variety of payment plans from two to 10 months. So we have a pay 10 program, which has parents pay, paying about 2000 US dollars a month without any finance charges. And I think that is a very agreeable uh, way to access the education, very exemplary education that is uh, available at AISK. Um, as, as Rajan said, you know, it, it, it looks very different when you are able to accomplish your learning primarily within the, the, the normal hours of the school day without having to uh, extend your school day into six, seven o'clock at night into, uh, at extra classes and then come home to do homework uh, or some of them Saturdays, Sundays, it's just ongoing ad nauseum. It's actually painful to hear. Um, and I'm not sure when children actually get to be children and enjoy their lives, um, which is also important, I, I think. Um, it's a very, very, uh, our fees are, are, are lower than boarding school fees for sure. So overseas boarding school fees for with a very comparable uh, product in many instances. And so we do ask um, parents to, to, to look and uh, see what is possible on the shores of Jamaica at our very excellent school. Um, for COVID uh, coming back for the new school year, uh, we will continue to have, or we have, we have uh, as I said earlier, revised our protocol, we have published our protocol, we have sent it off to the ministries to advise them of our intention to open uh, for the 2021-22 school year. We are uh, ready to go with uh, the same kind of restricted access to our school campus that we had last year. Um, where we have only students and those who are absolutely uh, functional in the teaching and learning on our school campus. We, so there is restricted access to parents, uh, just really managing the human movement um, on, on the internal campus. So we con will continue to have a st uh, stagger drop off and pick up times in the mornings and, and afternoons. We, uh, or we pivoted in last school year and moved our cafeteria ordering and all of those necessities online as much as possible. So there was as little transfer of human transfer of cash and or things um, uh, uh, just to keep uh, things as healthy as possible um, or the interaction, the person to person interaction to limit the person to person person interaction. We were also able to continue a lot of things um, which we are proud of. So we uh, were able to continue our physical education program uh, with the changes necessary to keep um, people healthy, keep our community healthy. And we intend to bring back some of our face-to-face -face, uh, after-school activities for this school year as well. Last year, we were doing a lot of understanding of where we are and what's happening with COVID. And so we feel that we do have the protocol um, on the wraps uh, to be able to bring back some after-school activities. Some did uh, take off last year, but those were all done virtually. Um, some of the things we're doing as well to prepare is we're certainly, uh, we've certainly moved to um, finding out how our community is in terms of vaccinations and being best ready to, to, to come back. Of course, we are looking for a high level of compliance with vaccinations 
uh, in our teaching staff and trying to understand as well uh, in the student population and uh, even the wider community, how many of our community members are vaccinated, which we do feel is going to uh, be a positive to opening and remaining, uh, uh, remaining healthy as a school community. So those are some of the things that are very important to us and that we're focusing on at this time uh, uh, as we complete the last couple of weeks of summer. Um, a lot of communication, tons and tons of communication and constant and timely communication uh, with our stakeholder groups uh, just to ensure that we try to give them everything that they need to know or as much as possible and or stay ready to respond to them when they do have questions and or comments to, um, to, to make people feel comfortable with uh, what is happening now and with returning to school uh, because we do know we absolutely know and we're very, very certain that having children in school face-to-face -face learning is what is best for them. We had a little um, activity at the end of uh, last school year where we, were, where we took a moment to celebrate, not to, well, to celebrate what we had and also to just acknowledge the impact of COVID uh, on our school community and the people who, who gather here every day. And I can tell you that the number one response that students gave and or wrote on their little ribbon for their ribbon ceremony was that they were so grateful to be back in school, to be back yeah. with their friends. And even in spite of the restrictions and the changes that they were very, very, they felt very privileged and very happy to be able to uh, be in that place. And so I'm hoping that, uh, well, I know that that's the way we are positioning and I'm hoping that's the way that others will position and that they will come to AISK to be a part of our school community. Wonderful. I'm just going to go around and give each of us 30 seconds to say a last word that we'd like to leave with the persons who have tuned in this evening. Um, and I'm starting with Danielle. Why did you start with me? Um, <laughs> I gotta like gather my thoughts. Um, basically, it's, I think it's a great place to work and I think it's a great place for kids to come by. And I think what really stands out a lot is our community and how we all draw together. And I think that only lends itself to what we do and, and who we are. So for sure, come on by. <laughs> uh, thanks, Danielle. And Piranha, you're you next. Um, what I'd like to say is um, if you would like your child um, to be in an environment where they are welcome to ask questions and uh, no question is a wrong question and they get self-motivated and they are happy to be going to school every day, then you should definitely consider taking them to AISK. Yeah. Thank you for that. Rajan. Yeah, I mean, just like um, <clears throat> as an extension to what Anna said uh, about, you know, um, students being so grateful, I think I mean that last month or a month and a little that school opened back uh, face to face, that for sure gave uh, all the students a sense of closure uh, to the to the full year. And, uh, you know, I think I mean, they really uh, went out, uh, you know, uh, thinking that you know they've, they've accomplished quite a bit and with that i think i mean they're looking forward to the coming back to the new year uh, and i'm that's really something that uh, you know I'm, I'm very happy about it that you know they were able to do that wonderful thank you mark you're taking us out um well i guess you guys have pretty much summed it all up um I guess I would never have thought of sending my kids to an American school, I could say, um, you know, out of many one people, uh, where a miscegenation of nations comes together um, under one roof. Um, friends from, you know, South Africa, Scotland, England, um, all over Africa, um, United States, Canada, Belgium, um, Brazil, Mexico, Argentina, um, my friends have made connections with kids all over the world um, and right here in Jamaica. And so for me, the, the out of many one people experience that I didn't want to miss by sending them to an American school um, 
it, it's been achieved because half the school population is also Jamaica. Um, and it's, it's been a rewarding experience and it's certainly one that I wouldn't change. Awesome. Thank you so much. I love that. That's a perfect note to, to end on. Actually, I would just say that as a parent myself, I realized that sending my children there didn't just mean sending them there, but my whole family came there um, and joined the AISK. And it really is a community that that is welcoming and warm and and open and always always changing, but always growing and learning. And um, so we want to thank you for joining us for this hour. It's been short and sweet. And we hope that we were able to provide you with enough to whet your appetite to cause you to come and take a look to pick up the phone and call Anna Wallace, who is our admissions director, who you've seen here, you've heard her share, you've heard Danielle share about her experience as a teacher and love and passion and energy um, that she exudes um, about how strongly she feels about AISK. And, and, and as Anna says, that the staff really feel passionately about education and about helping each child to grow and be his or her best self. What more do you need? So I encourage you to check us out, go to the website. It's new and improved. It's a beautiful, very friendly, easy to, to um, navigate website, get your information there and um, consider AISK as an option as you make your choices this summer. For those of you who are watching, who are from other schools, we're always eager to share what we do because we believe that all children deserve this kind of experience. And so we're wanting to make sure that as many children as possible get this too. So I want to thank my amazing panelists um, my fellow parents who I wish I could see at school every day, but I won't um, yet. And, um, and Daniel and Anna and the team, the production team at AISK for coordinating.